What's up everyone, Kaiji no Kami here, and tonight I'm going to be reviewing the next Garo movie that Kraken Releasing has given us, Garo Red Requiem. Red Rum. Red Rum. Red Rum. No! Not Red Rum, Red Requiem. Red Rum. Red Rum. Two completely different things with different meanings, not murder. Although this movie does have a lot of that in there. After the 2007 release of Garo's Beast of White Knight, it seemed like that was the end of the franchise. For years, people requested a new series, and in 2010, their prayers were finally answered. Keita Amamiya returned to create a new Garo story, this time in the form of a theatrical movie. Not only did we see the return of Koga and Zauruba, but the film also introduced us to a few new characters, one of whom would become a staple for the franchise from this point forward. Additionally, Amamiya combined his talents with that of 3D technology to give the film a unique feel. Of course, the problem when you shoot things in 3D is that the filmmakers seem to focus more on the gimmick rather than the substance of a movie. Does Garo Red Requiem suffer from this aspect? Let's take a look to find out. Red Requiem kicks off with a duo named Kurusu and Shion, settling in a nightclub with a mirror that contains the horror karma. This trio is played by Time Fire's Shinji Kasahara, Hiromi Eguchi, and Sayori Hara. <laughs> From here, we meet two Makai priests that confront a horror with a baby carriage. How do I know those two are actually heroes and not villains? Well, it's simple. Look at their coats. Oi, oi, oi. They struggle against the horror until their partner Reka appears to complete the job they could not. Time Green's Masahiro Kuranaki plays the youngest priest Shigato. Yosuke Saito is the older one named Akaza, while Mary Matsuyama portrays Reika. Koga suddenly shows up to rescue the trio from the real horror, Babel, which has taken on the form of a baby. That horror is pretty badass looking. Here, he dons his armor and defeats the guillotine beast. Hey girl, what's your superpower? Attacking people with goldfish. Wow. Afterwards, it is revealed that Koga has entered the city to take out Karma. Reika goes all emo on Koga. <laughs> I hate this entitled, spoiled brat. Now, she does have some reasonings before her entitledness, but still. Basically, her father was a Makai Knight, he was killed by karma, she wants revenge, she can't be a Makai Knight because she's a female, and she thinks that is not fair. Which, I mean, I can understand why, but remember guys, this is Japan, this is a society dominated by males, still though, okay, cool, fair, whatever. And then we also have Koga having flashback scenes of when he was a kid being trained by another Makai Knight. Hmm, I wonder who that is. It couldn't be Reika's father, could it? Nah, not at all possible. I have a daughter. She is a very sweet daughter. And she is a big girl. Oh wait. Yes, it is. If my daughter is so sweet, I am happy. Speaking of which, if you have watched Kamen Rider Ryuki, Shin Godzilla, Gamera the Brave, you may recognize Reika's father as he's played by Kanji Suda. Back at the club, a lone woman is visited by Shion. Yeah. 
Oh yeah, he so totally doesn't look all that creepy there. Still, she goes to the back room with him. Well, I guess strangers of candy are the best kind, although he really doesn't have candy. Did she seriously just drop her glasses? Bye bye, Goth Velma. Karma's a bitch. The next day, Koga discusses Karma with Akaza. Reika gets pissed off at this, so she decides to practice her Mortal Kombat skills. She then attacks Koga, who promptly kicks her ass with ease. Another woman is devoured by karma, leading Koga to the club. It is discovered that a Makai priest barrier has been protecting the club from detection. Oh my god, this is the biggest horror of them all. They have just walked into a 90s movie rave scene. Reika is led to the mirror by Xi'an, so naturally Koga has to go and rescue her. People die, although you probably would not know it based on their reaction. Um, hello? People have just died. Hello? Can you react at all? No? Well, why don't you get to like running away? Thank you. Well, whatever. Kurusu transforms into a horror. Koga's armor gets sucked into Karma's mirror when he tries to transform, causing both he and Reika to battle the vile creature without protection. <laughs> All seems lost as Koga is injured until they are rescued by Akaza and Shiguto. Akaza admits to being the one who put up the barrier, as Karma gave him a mirror that would allow him to see his deceased wife and daughter. Karma's a bitch. After recovering from his injury, Koga and gang head out to Karma's new hideout. Upon arriving, the gang decides to make a Scooby-Doo decision. What does this lead to? Wow, girl, can you look any more bored? <laughs> okay, yes you can. Yes you can. Break a battle, Xion, who is apparently a one-winged angel. You know what that means, right? <laughs>
time, Kurusu confronts Koga. Their duels cut short with Shion's death. We are then treated to a flashback scene with an older Kurusu, played by veteran Godzilla actor Akira Nikao, lamenting the death of his wife Shion. Akaza's sword is used to open Karma's mirror, which Koga and Reika enter while Kurusu pursues them. There, Koga easily regains his armor. I mean, seriously, the dude didn't have to put up any sort of fight whatsoever for it. It was just handed to him. You'd think that Karma would have locked it up in some type of seal or barrier or something and make him have to earn his armor back. But I guess 97 minutes was not enough time to really do that because they needed more time for the 3D effects. Nevertheless, we get a grand battle worthy of a final boss battle in a video game with Karma's defeat. Upon returning to the real world, Koga and Reika learn of the sacrifice Akaza made to help them win. Afterwards, they part ways. We are treated to a post credit scene with Zauroba naming the fish. That was Red Requiem, folks. Compared to what came before, it was not exactly the most engaging Garo experience. There isn't a whole lot of substance to go with its style as the movie is full of pointless 3D gimmicks and slow motion scenes that if you were to remove them, you'd probably take off a good 20 minutes or so, which may improve the pacing. It's a slow burn of a film, as it feels like an episode that was needlessly stretched out to be a full-length movie. It doesn't help that there isn't much in the way of character development for any of the new characters. Sure, we do get to learn about Reika's father, and she goes from being poorly acted emo whiny bitch to just poorly acted, but that takes up a fraction of the film. We also don't get any development for Shiguto at all, and Akaza's plot is about a minute worth of screen time. I can't say much about the villains either. One of the strong points to the series was how much focus was put onto the horrors especially when it comes to their main victim. In the case of Red Requiem, however, Karma is hardly developed at all, with her two protectors not really doing much of anything until the last act. It's kind of a shame since this could have easily been a truly top-notch horror film, as the series had been. I suppose that could be the downside to the story having to be told in movie form, as they had to develop their new Makai priest within a set time frame rather than being able to do it over the course of an entire season. Still, I can't really put my finger on it, as the film just seems to lack a sort of energy found in the series. Thankfully, the scenes towards the end of the movie when our heroes are searching an abandoned building for karma is full of suspense and tension, especially when the little cloaked minions appear. It features a lot of atmosphere and is what the majority of the movie should have been. Now that isn't to say the movie is a bore fest, as it does have some good fights and the designs continue to kick ass. Babel's design at the beginning is quite awesome as is karma's form at the end despite it coming off a little too similar to the final battle with Messiah. I also I find myself enjoying the suitcase dogs that should go to uses a few times. The 3D gimmicks hold a charm at first glance, yet they slowly start to wear out their welcome as we dive into the movie's second half. Unfortunately, the same goes for Shunji Inoue's score, which is vastly inferior to the score we had by Shinji Kinoshita and Koichi Ota in the series. Like the rest of the movie, it isn't bad per se, it just doesn't retain that fast-paced energy the Garo series is known for. For example, I like the track when Koga fights Babel. It's just that it doesn't really fit a battle sequence. Alternatively, check out this track when Koga fights Karma.
Now that's what I'm talking about. Lastly, as with Kiba Gaiden, Kraken's Blu-ray release is on par with the Japanese one sans the bonus features and 3D version of the film. However, unlike the Japanese release, Kraken has given us an English dub to the movie. I'm not exactly sure why they gave this movie an English dub. Perhaps they're planning to release it in theaters and wanted theaters to have a choice between Japanese and English? That's my guess, and if they're going to do a theatrical release, maybe they'll do the 3D version in theaters, which would entice people who already own the Blu-ray to go see it. But I have nothing to go on other than that. Either way, it seems weird to have an English dub for the movie and not the series. Not to mention hearing Josh Greeley as the voice of Koga sounds, well, odd. Your offensive form is extremely impressive. However, you need to work on your defense. I don't need to learn defensive forms. I just need to kill horrors! The cast itself is fine outside of one or two voices that don't feel matched. I'm just not a fan of live action dubs in general, so it didn't do anything for me. The fault wasn't yours. The rude one was Rekka! It's here! I can feel a horror's presence! It will show you your darkest desire. I see. So you're the daughter of that Makai knight. Still, the dialogue seemed to be on par with the Japanese script. あなたに似合いそうな素敵なドレスね。このドレスを着てあなたが最も輝ける場所に行ってみる。A pretty girl like you should wear that dress. That's what you want. To wear that dress and go someplace amazing. Isn't it? Overall, I'm not really sure where my feelings lie on Bread Requiem. It's not necessarily a bad movie, but it is one I have hardly watched over the years. I do like it more now than I did back in 2010. It just doesn't mean it's that good. It's a little too slow, the pacing is all over the place thanks to those slow downs and 3D gimmicks. It feels like the story needed to be a lot more cohesive and tighter, that this movie needed more polish to it. It also doesn't help that there's really little to no development on Karma or her two protectors throughout the film as we focus more on Reika because, whoa, wow, Reika is so great, and her support group. Still, you need to check it out because, as I said, it is important to the story. With that said, until next time, bye. Yeah.